Welcome to a Code Report C++ video. This is a new series that I created to cover purely C++ topics. And the main motivation for this video was that in another series, the algorithm series, where we have covered uh, five algorithms from the STL algorithm library, I glaze over the iterators that are passed to the algorithms. Um, and there are different types of iterators, and the different types of algorithms accept different types of iterators. So I figured it would be uh, useful to cover what the differences between those iterators are to inform those videos more. So let's take a look at the different types of iterators in C++. So as of C++ 17, there are six different types of iterators. And as of C++ 11, there were five different types. So those six different types are the output iterator, the input iterator, forward iterator, bidirectional iterator, the random access iterator, and in C++ 17, they added the contiguous iterator. And the way you can look at this diagram is that basically everything to the left of a given iterator qualifies also as the iterator that's on its right. So the input iterator uh, doesn't qualify as anything else, but each of the other four iterators to its left can qualify as an input iterator. So if an algorithm uh, requests an input iterator as a template parameter, you can give it any of these five and they will all satisfy the requirements. So another way to look at this, uh, of, at these six iterators is with the following hierarchy. This leaves out the contiguous iterator, but you can basically uh, treat sort of random access iterator and contiguous iterator uh, as the same for most cases. So at the top level of our hierarchy, we have the input iterator and the output iterator. Input is read only and can only move forwards and output iterator is write only and can only move forwards. Uh, the forward iterator can do both read and write and is only forward moving. Uh, the bidirectional iterator can both move forward and backward and can uh, both read and write. And the random access iterator is the most powerful iterator of all. It can read, write, and has random access. So in other words, what that means is that if you need to move from one element that an iterator is currently pointing to to another element that is potentially n steps away from your current iterator, the first four are going to take linear time to do that in the number of steps steps that it is away, but a random access iterator can do that in constant time. And uh, the way that it does that is using the plus equals operator. So I would say that this is the most important feature that differentiates uh, the random access iterator from the other four iterators. And you could imagine which of the containers in the STL uh, return which of these iterators from their begin and end and C begin and C end methods. Uh, but I wrote a small piece of code to confirm uh, which of these uh, are actually being returned. And you could also go look at C++ reference uh, to see actually which of the methods, but I thought this would be a little bit more fun. So this isn't the most beautiful piece of code, but it makes use of the type traits and type info uh, libraries by using type ID. And they have these tags that you can basically check uh, by using type ID and uh, checking the iter iterator category. And so this is just a template to function and if you combine this with uh, some code that looks like this where basically you construct one of your containers and get an iterator to it and then pass that iterator to this get iterator type function that we just showed it will output which of the iterators uh, is being returned by the begin and end functions of your container and the results of this are as follows uh, so I'm not showing all of the containers provided by STL, so I left out the three container adapters, and I also left out the multi-containers, uh, so multi-set, multi-map, and unordered multi-set and multi-map, because those are just going to be the same as uh, these four right here. And this is exactly what we, we would expect. So array, vector, and DQ all have random access iterators, so you can use the plus equals on those iterators in order to jump around, and that makes sense because, you know, these are stored contiguously in memory so it's easy to do that uh, forward iterator is exactly what we expect as well because that's exactly what forward list is it's a singly list link it's a singly uh, linked list that you can only iterate forwards in uh, list is bi-directional once again that's exactly what we expect because a list is a doubly linked list that you can move backwards and forwards through and for our associative associative containers uh, we expect to see bi-directional as well because uh, these aren't stored contiguously in memory they're implemented uh, 
at least the associative containers are implemented as red black trees and the unordered associative containers are implemented as hash maps uh, and so you're, you're not going to be able to use the plus equals operator on an iterator to jump four spaces ahead that doesn't make sense because these are stored with a key and then you do a lookup to get the value um, so this is exactly what we expect and uh, just to inform the two videos that I've already released on the algorithms channel, these are the four, uh, or sorry, the five algorithms that we've covered, and these are the uh, iterators that these functions accept. So uh, for sort and stable sort, you're going to need to pass it a random access iterator. So this makes sense. We're only going to be able to use this on a container such as vector and array. It wouldn't make sense to call this on an already sorted uh, container or a container that's specifically not sorted, such as set or unordered set. And for our uh, binary search algorithms, um, they're going to not need something as specific as a random access iterator, it can use just a forward iterator, but it'll also accept a random access iter iterator if that's what you give it. As always, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Make sure to follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contest start. You can find all of the code that I use in my videos on my GitHub page. All of the links are in the description down below. And finally, if you want to make sure you don't miss any of my upcoming videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.